POTS disease and more and more evidence that it's autoimmune. I'm Dr. Martin Rutherford. I am a certified functional medicine practitioner and a chiropractor. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractor. And this uh, this has uh, the, the ring of so many other things that we've been doing over the years so many times. We've, when we first started out with fibromyalgia and we didn't know anything other than we thought that we knew what was causing the pain of fibromyalgia and we'd treat that. And, and then half of those people were just diagnosed with Lyme disease and they were improving mm -hmm. and others had f maybe different aspects of POTS and they were not completely getting better, but maybe improving. And we would look at each other on our Saturday morning, now Monday night meetings and say, it must be autoimmune. <laughs> it must be autoimmune. And uh, so we've had a similar experience with POTS and, uh, and, and certainly, uh, and, and Dr. Gates has been uh, approaching it multifactorially, there's a couple of things involved that need to be addressed when you have POTS disease if you want to gain some improvement and get some control over the situation. But in the end, you have uh, indicated through your research and response to care that uh, you've been treating it as an autoimmune problem for quite a while now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, three or four or five years, I think. That, that at least I, four. Yeah. At least four. I'm thinking the one specific mm -hmm. case back, back then. So at least four. So. So share with us the data, the new data on um, further data on the fact that it's probably an autoimmune attack against the, the well, certain aspects of your adrenal gland. Yeah, exactly. So the original studies came out of the Mayo Clinic where they found that the immune system was attacking the adrenal receptor. Um, basically, there were these adrenal receptor antibodies. Sometimes there were immune cells to your autonomic nervous system, basically. And so um, that's your the system that creates your fight flight response mm -hmm. and your rest and digest. So if you go to stand up, you need a fight flight response to get blood up to your brain because otherwise all the blood will pull down your feet, which is what's happening with most of you POTS patients most of the day. And so they did these studies and they found that these immune cells were blocking the action of adrenaline, which is part of that fight flight response. And because of that, then your body would make more adrenaline all day long, especially when you were up and moving around, which would cause your heart rate to go really fast, cause you to have brain fog, cause you to be fatigued, all these different symptoms. Now, the new research just came out of basically Oklahoma, where they found immune cells to angiotensin II receptors. Now, angiotensin, we talked about stress in the angiotensin system um, maybe three, four weeks, weeks ago. ago. Yeah, and basically, in blood pressure physiology, the simple model is if you cut off your leg and you're spurting out blood, your body goes into these defense mechanisms to try and save your life. One way it does that is by increasing sodium into the circulation, also by changing blood pressure through something called renin to help keep you from bleeding out. Well, in the world of blood pressure, because we have such an issue with that in our society, the pharmaceutical companies have created drugs that in essence will affect these uh, blood pressure mechanisms through what I mentioned, renin, angiotensin, angiotensin converting enzyme, all these different mechanisms are involved. And so these researchers found that with POTS patients that this angiotensin chemical is blocked by the immune system in essence. And this is another, another big finding for all of you patients with POTS who are searching for answers. We're doing this because it's just giving you more and more evidence that it is autoimmune. So it's a double whammy? It's a double whammy. In the sense that you're not, you're, the receptor sites aren't sinking so that your adrenaline can't work and then, then you're not getting the blood pressure mechanism to work right because that's being blocked too. Yeah, because angiotensin is And then your head blocked. goes, you go from here to there and the blood can't follow up to your head and then you get that instantaneous lightheadedness or you pass out. So that begs the question, does, is someone more receptive to this? And I understand it's an autoimmune problem and I understand that we have receptor sites that are getting attacked, which are something that is now embedded in your DNA, okay? So in other words, once this happens, the goal is not to cure it. Because at this point in time, no one knows anything about curing something that is, that is embedded in your DNA. So, um, uh, so you learn to control it, you, you learn aspects of how to control your autoimmune response and your stress response. Uh, 
So this is a beg the question that if people are in a chronic fight flight response already, does that, even though one big part of it, and if I'm, I, I'm assuming that there's a genetic component to it, kind of like when the, when mm -hmm. like, like I'm, I'm comparing it to when you get an immune attack against yourself, then some, my understanding is some, uh, polymorphisms are created in which you now turn on some genes and then now mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. said I, it's okay to attack me mm -hmm. which it's mm -hmm. not okay to attack you and that's mm -hmm. why autoimmune problems are so bad and then so you have that component and you have the chronic and you have the stress component um, that may not be there mm -hmm. but if it's there does that make a patient more susceptible to developing something like this or does it make it harder to be for you to be able to help them for us to put Mm, if the stress component is there, if they're in fight it, flight, if yeah, they're, if they're like fight, they're chronic fight flight syndrome. Um, from you know, like a, a brain perspective, then yeah, it makes it harder to correct them because they already with POTS, you already have too much adrenaline. So then, if you add anxiety on top of it or chronic fight flight, then yeah, it is harder in my experience to help those patients. And that's why I'm asking them because yeah. of the patients that have come in here who right. like we've had some that were normally stressed. Mm -hmm. maybe in a low <laughs> post-traumatic stress. And then we have the one in particular I was actually thinking of years and years ago was super, super PTSD. Mm -hmm. Had some really, really life trauma, mm -hmm. some real difficulties. And that one seemed to be maybe the diff most mm -hmm. difficult yeah, case most that, difficult that I think you managed that on that. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, like that. so again, I, I, I go back to that. There's been a number of articles I've been reading lately that are now confirming so many of the things that that we've been talking about forever. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was one in the Wall Street Journal on how childhood trauma actually can perpetuate problems in the future. There's just a lot of things that we're seeing. And so just to bring that out, that awareness out um, also. But it's, a, it's an autoimmune problem. It is, and it can also involve small fiber peripheral neuropathy as well, which we see overlap with fibromyalgia, and that's where your pain nerves start to die and degenerate, but the same nerves that send signals regarding pain also send signals regarding blood pressure and blood vessel tone. And so that's why it's really important for POTS patients. So it is multifactorial. It's not all autoimmune, but a significant percentage is either autoimmune or neuropathy or both. Yeah. So that's basically the Yeah, so you'd be addressing all that. You'd mm -hmm. be addressing the stress response. You'd be addressing immune inflammation, you know, in, a, in addition to the, what is it, eat salt and, right. and put, put the blood mm -hmm. pressure mm -hmm. socks on and, and mm -hmm. get your blood pressure up. And um, I, it's probably quite a bit beyond mm -hmm. that to get a more optimal response mm -hmm. uh, that you can uh, not just experience but maintain uh, in, into the future. And then they're also seeing histamine responses being too high in POTS patients, so we see that as well. Makes sense. So, yeah. There's a lot of overlap there. But yeah, if you're a patient who has chronic fatigue, if you're not feeling well, looking into POTS is something that's very important. The way it's standardly diagnosed is you take your heart rate while you're laying flat with your head not elevated first thing in the morning when you wake up, and then you take it 10 minutes later after you've been up and moving around, and you look for a 30-point increase in your heart rate. That's one way to evaluate for POTS, and you do that over a week's time. The tilt table test is the other way to, to make sure that you have it or you don't have it. So that's the data on it. Anything else you want to add? No, no, I think uh -huh. that's good. Uh -huh. All right, well, we'll be back next week with another exciting broadcast. And if you have any questions, go to powerhealthtalk.com. And we appreciate you watching.